Hey, Hickok here. While I had my camera set up, I uh, thought I would uh, do a little Glock cleaning. I have had several people uh, message me and, and uh, ask me to do a, a Glock cleaning video, how I clean my Glock, that kind of thing. Well, I'll do a quick one here. I don't do anything all that special, probably about the same thing most people do, but I thought, uh, what the heck, I'll do it. It's my Glock 27. First, of course, you want to make sure it's unloaded. All right. Clear gun. Nothing in it. No magazine, no bullets. All right. You know you have to pull the trigger. The trigger needs to be back before you can break it down. Take the slide off. Barrel out. There we go. All right. If, uh, if any of you have difficulty breaking one of these down, maybe I should have. Uh, some of you new Glock owners. You've just recently gotten into, uh, into the Glock. Let me put it back together here. Uh, the trigger's got to be pulled, and you know you want to grab it, grasp it right there, and pull it back. Use the sight to, to get it back a little bit. Now I have discovered if I can keep enough of my thumbnail <laughs> grown out, it helps me a great deal in pulling down the lever to, to release that. So to me, struggle with it now. But you don't have to have the slide back very far for it to uh, to break loose. Okay. So get the separate parts out. And what I do, first thing I do, again, <laughs> I'm just going to tell you what I do. Uh, other people may do it totally differently and some may not like what I do. Sorry about that. I've been doing it for over 20 years. Works just fine. Uh, one of the things I use, I went to a different uh, lubricant about, uh, move, I don't know, it's been 10, at least 10 years ago for uh, some of my cowboy guns and things. And then I began trying it on my my modern guns and so for a long time it's all I've used on any of my guns and I'm not selling this stuff uh, they're trying to sell you on it it's ballistol I call it ballistol I think they pronounce it ballistol but it's just a uh, uh, pretty big good stuff uh, for me and what I do is I, I spray down the barrel now this barrel is clean but I'm going to go ahead and do it in the interest of the video I just spray a lot of ballistol down in there this whatever cleaner lubricant you use I soak the barrel in it outside and inside this ballistol, one of the qualities of it or characteristics is that uh, after you use it a little bit, it, uh, it it's like cleaning, it's like an iron skillet. That's one of the analogies that's used quite often. The Whatever metal you clean with it continually, it, it, it gets kind of a slick surface uh, and it, it's kind of like a cured iron skillet, if some of you know what that means. I cook on an iron skillet, so I know well what it means. I have one I fry eggs on several times a week and uh, I never have to to scratch and mess with it uh, it just cleans up you I just wipe it out with a paper towel when I'm finished uh, because it's been used so much so it is very similar to that and I have noticed I get less leading uh, after I've uh, used ballast on on a gun for a while so for whatever that's worth uh, but you need to do your own research on that and that's like motor oils everybody has their favorite motor oil and their favorite gun cleaning uh, solution so I don't want to unduly influence you on that you can't even get this stuff in a lot of places anyway so what I do is I, I, I go ahead and put that on the barrel. Uh, for one thing, ballistol does, it's not like acid. It doesn't just eat everything up immediately. It works a little bit better if it has a little bit of time. So the barrel, while the barrel is soaking, I typically, I grab a toothbrush. I'm always looking for a sales on toothbrushes. You know, so if I'm at Walgreens or somewhere and I see they've got a pack of five or six for a couple of bucks, I'll, I'll purchase them. And of course you can use brushes you find at gun shows and everything else too. But and I and I while that's soaking, I take a toothbrush and I, I work on the the receiver, you know, the, the gun. And here I make sure I get any kind of excess powder, which there rarely is any. But I just uh, hit it with a clean toothbrush, no oil on that toothbrush at all. I don't touch any of this at all with uh, oil. Yeah, I mean I I keep it far away from from that. So so I just get the worst of the carbon off, you know. And if it's looking like there's quite a bit of carbon, something else I'll do is I'll get me a little cap. I may just pour out some alcohol. It's this extremely unusual uh, <laughs> solution. I'll just take a little alcohol, rubbing alcohol. I guess denatured would be a little bit better. I'll take a uh, Q-tip. I know some people say you shouldn't use a Q-tip around a gun. You get cotton in there and all these horrible things happen. And I'll just dip it down in there a little bit, uh, sometimes without the alcohol, just to... Just depends on how dirty the gun is and when the last time I gave it a really thorough cleaning. 
So I'll just uh, you know get some of that carbon out. I think you could not clean this at all. You know this this part of the gun, and uh, maybe for ten thousand rounds and it, it not malfunction unless you're getting oil in there and you're attracting a lot of dirt and powder residue or something. But uh, I go ahead and do it anyway. I just feel better about it. Uh, so I just uh, get a little of that out every time I clean, and then it stays stays pretty clean. Okay. So if I see any grit, special grit anywhere, you know, get it with the, the Q-tip usually. Okay. And then the, the then the brush, the toothbrush. Again, this is a dry, fairly new toothbrush. I cycle the toothbrushes as they get dirtier and dirtier. Then I move them over to another stack over here where I actually use them with oil on them, maybe to, to brush the, the barrel you know, on other guns and glocks and everything. So, so I have two basic uh, stashes of toothbrushes. Those that might be a little dirty have a little carbon on them, but they have no oil. And they don't even get brushed over oil virtually. So I like to keep those separate. And so I'm happy with that. And I don't see I've lost any bristles down in the gun or anything. So, and, that, and I've never noticed that ever happening. So I don't worry a whole lot about that. It's a Glock after all. Okay, so that, that part of the gun is great. Then I do the same thing with the uh, slide. I look under here, and you'll have some carbon there, and uh, you know, the firing pin block, especially will have carbon coating on it in here. I'll you know, rake it across there. Again, there shouldn't be any oil in there really, so I'm still kind of working with a dry brush. Okay? I'm just brushing it out, getting the worst of that. And I may use my uh, Q-tip with a little alcohol if it's got a lot of carbon on it in the face of the bolt there. You know, and I'll just I'll hit that, you know, like that, and get get that excess out, and I never get anything with oil on it around, you know, the action here. Just a little alcohol, maybe, okay. And of course, it's clean now, and I'll I'll run a Q-tip up through there. And again, I'm all, I'm careful. I make sure I don't leave any cotton anywhere, you know, that sort of thing, any fibers. And I've been known to, depending on the gun, sometimes a pipe cleaner. You know, it's good for that. You can curl up a, a pipe cleaner. If you see something in there you can't get with a Q-tip, you know, in an area behind that extractor, you know, kind of thing. So, you know, you know, a Q, uh, any kind of uh, pipe cleaner, or sometimes even a Q-tip, you can you make sure you got that. The toothbrush works well there too. Of course, hitting that extractor, you know, behind there, getting that carbon deposits out of there, uh, what little there might be. Usually, there's not a lot in a Glock. And to where it looks clean, you know, I'm happy with it. And I make sure I have no oil. I've not got any oil around that firing pin hole or in the back, anywhere there. Don't want any oil there. The front, that's a different matter. The front of the slide, yeah, a little oil won't hurt it. All right. So I look at that. Okay, I've got that in pretty good shape. It's ready to go. I set it back over here. Spring, yeah, usually stays pretty clean. I might every now and then hit it with a toothbrush just to make sure it doesn't have undue amounts of uh, carbon deposits on it. Put it aside, and all I have left is the barrel, of course. The barrel's been soaking. And let's get rid of this alcohol. I don't want to have a little surprise fire or anything around here. We got enough flammables with gunpowder everywhere. Okay. So the barrel. What do I do with that? Well, you fire and jacket at ammo, so the barrel is not full of lead or anything. I get my. That's a 40 caliber, so I need my 40-45 rod here and I tend not to use boar snakes on uh, on a Glock uh, some some of you probably do I like boar snakes I use them on uh, my rifles and shotgun and everything I even have one for the 40 caliber I think somewhere I just tend not to use it I, I forget about it. they're so simple it's like why do you you know need to use a boar snake I still use the old rod and uh, I run a patch through there pretty stiff and I'll I usually soak it first, but since the gun wasn't even dirty, I didn't do that. And that one usually comes out, you know, dirty. You see, that's clean. I keep a clean gun. All right. You would have caught me if I hadn't, right? So I run that through two or three times and uh, work it in and out from the rear. And then we get another patch, dry one. And sometimes that's enough. Generally, I think I'll usually run two wet, two uh, lubricated patches soaked with uh, Delistol up through there, and then I'll start the dry ones, and I'll run either one or two of those through, just to make sure there's no oil, you know, in the barrel. And while I'm doing that, I might take up a paper towel and, and get the oil off the uh, outer part of the barrel for the most part. Okay. Now, like I said, this 
Ballistol leaves a kind of a film. It's it's just different. It, it interacts with the metal in a way. It, it it's I don't know. It's more penetrating or something. I don't know. I don't want to sound like an ad for it. But it uh, the barrel. If I got if I wiped on that with 16 different dry cloths and got every bit off, you feel my barrel. It's really really smooth. Really smooth. It, again, it's like that iron skillet. And I think I could almost not put any lubricant back on my Glocks for five years as far as actually putting a drop in the places you're supposed to, and it wouldn't matter because it, uh, it just sort of stays there, that residue. So Not in liquid form. It's just like a Teflon coating almost or something. I don't know. All right, so she's dry and the barrel's in good shape. So put the barrel back in. I'm ready to go. Well, before I do that, I tell you, like I said, I tend not to oil much. I under oil, if anything. Now, what I will do uh, often is I will put just a, a drop up. You see where I'm, yeah, like right, right there. And that's way too much for me, for my taste. So I'll usually uh, you know, dob that out of there. I don't want that much oil. Give me another Q tip here. Dob some of that out. Run some of up along this channel. Okay. Yeah, don't want much oil on my gun at all. Maybe just a tad around there. Okay. But the front part of the gun up here is okay. Not a not a crime. All right. Then I will. I'll try to get what I do. I'll get a little bit. Uh, I'll spray some on the table here. Again, this oil. This is like. It's it's great. The bell stall is good for wood and leather and everything. So it's just uh, my wood, my workbench stays treated with the bell stall. So I'll touch a little bit, you know, right there on the rails, a little bit on that side, a little bit more, tad back here, and then on the other side over there. That's about all I do. You may lube more. You may have read that you're supposed to put lube here and there and all over the place. I don't. And I put him back together, and he's ready to go. Bang. That's uh, basically how I clean my Glocks. Okay, so for whatever that's worth. Now, this one wasn't very dirty, but uh, that's the, the process I go through. Now there's the brush. Again, I used uh, only in areas where there was no oil, really. So I'm going to leave this brush over here in the dry pile for now. Now, after a couple of three cleanings, I'll, I'll move him over to the, to the oily brush stack. Okay, and that's kind of the way I cycle my, my brushes. Right. So, Glock Cleaning 101, uh, that's what I do. I, I, I can't think of anything else. Now, what I'm that's just uh, basic cleaning when you, you fired the gun. Uh, you know, you, you're keeping pretty good uh, cleaning, cleaning uh, habits, you know, uh, with the, the gun. Uh, what I might show you in another video is what I do with the slide. About once a year or once every six months, depending on how much I shoot the Glock and also uh, how that gun is used. If it's one that just sits in the safe most of the time, I, you know, I may not think about it too much, or if it's strictly a range gun, you know, I don't worry about how often I do it as much. But depending on the importance of the gun and how often it's used, uh, I try to take the slide apart every few months or at least once a year to minimum. Okay, make sure that uh, firing pin channel, the striker channel, is clean. And uh, that can cause problems if it's not or if you get oil in there. So I feel better, I sleep better at night if I know that, that all is clean. But on just your basic cleaning, if you've been to the range, that's what I do. So hopefully that helps. And uh, again, I'm not trying to sell this Ballistol, this Ballistol product. That's just what I've used for uh, a good while now. I use it on all my guns, my ARs and uh, revolvers, Glocks, you name it. And uh, there are a lot of good cleaning supplies out there, a lot of good cleaning products. Uh, this one I use for cleaning and lubing and for everything. So whatever you use, it is nice to have one type of uh, product that uh, is a lube and a cleaner that's for certain so uh, there again you didn't have to see my ugly face and uh, hopefully that helps some of you a little bit particularly if you're just getting into to Glocks